the scene described by the Lord in the gospel parable today, I think it's very easy for all of us to imagine. The Pharisee comes into the synagogue, self-satisfied, complacent in fulfilling his religious duties. And really, he expects to be rewarded by God for his efforts and proudly presents himself before the Lord. On the other hand, the tax collector is only too aware of his failings and his shortcomings. He beats his breast in humble repentance, asking only for mercy. The Lord then draws out his lesson from this story. Very simply, the person who exalts himself will be humbled. And the person who humbles himself will be exalted. I think it's worth noting that this parable particularly concerns being humble before God. Not just being humble amongst other people. And this theme is reflected in the apostolic teaching in the New Testament. So for instance, St. James really echoes this parable when he teaches, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Similarly, St. Peter says in his first letter, humble yourselves therefore before God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. In other words, the parable and the New Testament teaching, which I've just quoted, urges us all to humble ourselves before the Lord. One area in which this can apply for us, I think importantly today, is our willingness to humble ourselves before the Lord in respect to his to our approach to sacred scripture. Because it's not unusual for the teaching of the sacred scripture to be at variance with the attitudes and ethos of our age. You know, the Old Testament prophets often found themselves having to say things that were offensive to the ears of the people of their time. And we now find ourselves as Catholics, as Christians, being criticised and persecuted because we believe what the scriptures teach and we desire to live by its imperatives, even when they are at variance with the ethos of our times. I mean, the recent case of Andrew Thorburn, who was forced to choose between his Christian faith and his new role as chair of the board of Essendon Football Club is a case in point. It was because his church stood by scriptural teaching about abortion and the nature of marriage that he was considered unsuitable to be, the, to be chair of a board of a football club. Now all this was by inference as Andrew himself had not made any public statements on these moral issues. This tells us that our society is becoming increasingly hostile to Christian beliefs found in sacred scripture and actually to demand that people abandon their Christian faith if they wish to exercise public office. This is a most dangerous development in our Australian society. We have more recently the case where parents have protested about the use of a text from St Paul's letter to the Ephesians because they felt that this text offended their understanding about the role of women in marriage. And this reflects really a similar situation. In this case, a single text from, the New, from a New Testament writing is being taken out of its full context. <clears throat> St Paul's statement about women being subject to their wives reflects, yes, the culture of the day. 
But he then presents what is really a radical vision of marriage inspired by Christian belief in the equal dignity of men and women because he calls on, on husbands to sacrifice themselves for their wives as Christ sacrificed himself for the church. Now this teaching of St Paul in his day would have been an extraordinary challenge to the pagan world in which he lived where women were readily discarded and divorced by their husbands. Marital fidelity was debased in Roman pagan society. And Christianity actually proposed a, re a revolutionary view and elevated the status of women and stressed the sanctity of the marriage bond. So when St Paul proposed that marriage should be compared to the union between Christ and his church, he was in fact proposing a real revolution in how the marriage union was to be viewed. There are two dogmatic constitutions which were produced by the Second Vatican Council. The other documents were pastoral constitutions. One of those dogmatic constitutions was on the nature of the church, Lumen Gentium. And the other was on the nature of divine revelation, Dei Verbum. The document on divine revelation is very important as it outlines how the church understands sacred scripture and its relationship with tradition and church teaching. So Dei Verbum begins with the words, hearing the word of God with reverence and proclaiming it with faith. This is the attitude we adopt as Catholics towards the word of God. We listen to it with reverence and we proclaim it with faith. The Council of Fathers taught that the scriptures are first and foremost the source of God's revelation about himself. <clears throat> Here the Council of Fathers make the point that sacred scripture is not just revelation about God. It is in fact God revealing his very self. So the document says, it pleased God in his goodness and wisdom to reveal himself and to make known the mystery of his will. The fathers taught obedience of faith must be given to God as he reveals himself. By faith, man can freely commits his entire self to God, making the full submission of his intellect and his will to God who reveals and willingly asserting, assenting to the revelation given by him. In other words, the Christian humbles himself before the word of God and offers the obedience of faith. One of the important points made by the Council of Fathers was that scripture needs to be read, as they say, from the heart of the church. Thus, it is to be read within the total understanding of the faith. And De Verbum says that in order to interpret the scriptures correctly, we should carefully search out the meaning that God had in mind through the medium of the words of the writer of the text. So taking one sentence in isolation fails to do this. Thus as people of faith, we read the scriptures with a humility of mind and a desire to seek divine truth and divine wisdom. In other words, we do what St. James and St. Peter urged us to do. We humble ourselves before the Lord. <clears throat>